Good morning. How good to see you. Another lovely day to serve the Lord. Ah, I, I woke up this morning not knowing quite, quite what to talk about. Um, thinking about bringing every thought captive, thinking about the airfield of our mind and everything. And then my thoughts turned this morning to um, the fact that our life with God is, is a daily life. It's a daily walk. The Lord's Prayer says, give us today our daily bread. Um, and this links up with the manna provision in the wilderness, that they were given enough for the day. They weren't given enough for a week. Um, and today is Sunday. Today is the day when lots of people go to church. And for lots of people, um, being a Christian and following Jesus is a Sunday thing. Um, they go once a week, and uh, the rest of the week they live. Uh, maybe they thought, think about God at some particular times. They think about their faith as a personal faith, um, which of course it is, but as a person, it's between me and God. I go on a Sunday, I, see, I, I worship, <clears throat> I listen to the sermon, I go home, and then uh, the rest of the week's my own. <clears throat> and uh, that's not... That's not being a disciple. Um, that's not being a disciple. That's being um, a supporter, but not being a disciple. There's a big difference, isn't there? Um, in many of the activities of life, there's a big difference. There's a big difference between being a supporter of a political party, for example, and being someone, uh, you know, you're, you're a supporter, you vote for them, um, but you jo don't join the party. When you join the party, you put your money to it. And then you can be asked to go canvassing when the election comes up. And you're actively promoting that party. It's quite different to being just someone who puts their name to it and puts a cross in the right place on a voting paper. Um, we need to be more. And it made me think um, about the, the two little parables which are in uh, Matthew 13, 44 and 45. Let me read them to you as, your, as the thought for today, which is Sunday, the Lord's Day. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field in order to get the treasure, <laughs> of course. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. These are pictures that Jesus uses. Of course, we can't do that. If we find treasure in a field, we have to tell, we have to tell that we found it because, and we get a portion of it, um, uh, the value of it, but it belongs, it doesn't, belo it doesn't belong to us. But these were different days when Jesus told these stories. Um, and I've heard these talked about in two different ways. One, from God's point of view. That God, like the good shepherd, the shepherd that has lost one sheep out of a out of hundred, leaves the ninety-nine and goes searching for the one until he finds it. Um, that this is God finding us, each of us, the treasure or the pearl, and giving everything that he has, Jesus, and, and, and his love and his everything, in order to gain that prize. But I've, I've often seen these parables more to be that this is us, that I am I am like the person who's a treasure hunter, um, who finds the treasure of Jesus, the treasure of new life, the treasure of God's love for me, finding that and being willing to sell everything else to gain that one thing. You know, Jesus said it, didn't he? He said, seek first the kingdom of heaven, and everything else, what you eat, what you wear, where you live, what you do, how, how everything works in your life, everything else falls into place when your priority is the kingdom of God. The man, the merchant, in search of fine pearls. He knows a good pearl when he sees one. And then he finds this pearl, this 
this beautiful pearl of great price. And he again sells everything he has and buys it. Um, I, I've always found it really quite difficult to understand people who have their faith in God as as just a factor in their lives and not the <coughs> over surpassing value in their life. Um, it's when we read great stories of missionaries, you know, who leave everything, um, Hudson Taylor, you know, or um, George Muller, uh, some of these great, um, great missionaries who find God, um, uh, Newton as well, um, John Newton, who wrote uh, Amazing Grace. Um, he was... He, he, he thought he knew everything about God. Um, many of them were preachers before they even encountered the Lord. And then when they encountered the Lord and knew how, how amazing he was, everything else was not worth anything to them. And they, they, they sacrificed it all in order to serve God and to, to love and be a servant of Jesus and to tell other people of this amazing thing that they had found not to keep it for themselves I mean in these stories these people the the, the man who found the pearl he, he wouldn't have sold it um, he wouldn't have sold it for anything in the world but when we find Jesus we share that knowledge of finding him with other people we're not meant to keep it it's not just to make us feel wonderful you know but we we should we should hand it out and give it out to other people. There's a there's a passive, there's a pa passive attitude around. Um, I don't know what feeds it really, but there are many many people in the kingdom of God who are simply happy to be in, and 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 they're content just to be saved, to know Jesus, to follow Him, to love Him. But the last thing they would ever do is anything active. So. When you get a call for a, a prayer meeting, they don't want to be there. They've got other things more important. There's a call to do something like uh, we did last year in Chard, which was to offer to pray for people on the streets of Chard as a witness between um, the day of Ascension and Pentecost Sunday, 10 days, to spend an hour on the streets of Chard simply offering to pray for people. Uh, all the churches in Chard were invited to join in, but there weren't many people who did it. Everyone else didn't want to do it, thought it was far too public, far too exposed, um, not something they, they felt called to do. The same with reading the Bible outside the Guildhall. We did that the year before, or was it the year before that? I can't remember. And we all took it in turns to read a passage of the Bible. And it was very interesting that it was the same group of people who shared in that and it was the same others who were passive and simply not interested in doing anything like that this is something to think about how important in your life is your relationship with Jesus is he the treasure that you sell everything to gain the pearl that is more beautiful than any other pearl you've ever seen how much do you value him? How much do you value your salvation? This is the Lord's Day. Let's worship him together. Um, whatever you're doing today, I pray that you will worship him. It's the Lord's Day. Um, it's a day perhaps to have communion, you and your those who live in your household. Um, and have a great day. Think about what's most important to you and what your faith means to you today. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.